In this podcast, guys, we're going to be talking with Bettina Beering. She's been living in Mexico for the past 20 years. She's going to be sharing some of her experiences living in the area of Ajic and working as a real estate agent. Stay tuned, guys. The podcast is on its way. Ajic is a uh, microcosm of a, of a perfect world. Welcome to the Rich Varney Show, everyone. I am so excited to be doing another podcast for you. So first things first, I want to welcome Bettina. Bettina, welcome to the podcast. Rich, thank you very, very much for uh, having me on your show, on your podcast. I I couldn't imagine living anywhere else, although I was born and raised in Berlin, Germany, and uh, left there as a rebellious teenager, spent the next 20 years in New York, working like crazy there, uh, married, divorcing, raising my daughter. In the last um, several years, 10, 15 years, we've just seen so many changes that some people lament that there are actually traffic lights on the road now. Um, <laughs> but we, we are so incredibly lucky to live in, in this climate um, with, surrounded by this beauty, with fabulous restaurants, with cinemas, with uh, music festivals, with this wonderful fresh produce that we, that we can buy uh, anywhere for next to nothing, with all of the imported things that we might want or need. So I think Ahik is a, a microcosm of a of a perfect world because you have this wonderful mix of expats and and Mexicans and uh, we have um, also now an influ uh, an influx of um, of wealthier Mexicans coming in from Monterrey from Guadalajara. So uh, the the face of Ahihik has changed for me to the better. And that is why this is my, my world and I never want to leave. All in all, the infrastructure has got better. The roads have got better. You know, and that's really down to the investment, I believe. The investment of the Americans coming in, the, as you mentioned, the investments of the wealthier Mexicans that are coming from Guadalajara, buying property, having their weekend homes, and some of them actually retiring. Like the, People all talk about... People talk a lot about the baby boomer of America. And I say, and the demographic of it, and we know we get a huge influx of, of and Akahik being the, probably the second or the third most important location out of America for Americans to retire in. And it's a huge opportunity for Akahik. But we've also seen the, inf- the influx of nationals that are also baby boomers and done pretty well for themselves. For, for, for the same reasons, to escape the traffic, to have a better, less costly lifestyle. And uh, a, a, another group that I see coming in is Mexican professionals. So much work can be done online these days. Um, so I, I have several friends who are in their 40s and 50s who've decided to leave Guadalajara behind and pack up their families and do their work uh, online. One of the places that I most enjoy is the Malecon of Ajijic because that to me is a microcosm of different cultures and different socioeconomic levels living together and it gives me great joy to 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 see that Mm -hmm. i i totally agree tina has been working four years in the real estate business seeing how well bettina's done in the past four years and and i'm sure as i know from personal experience over the past two years it, it takes a lot of work a lot of dedication a lot of persistence you know and um and so you know well done for for you know, what you've achieved so far in your real estate career. I'm I'm sure you're very proud of yourself. It it goes against my nature a little bit to admit to that. But yes, I'm very proud of that. And and I have really put in the work. And through my contacts, both in the expat and the Mexican communities, both here and in Guadalajara, 
I've had um, a, a real leg up. So that's really helped me just by knowing a lot of people, knowing about homes that might be available, although they're not on the market, um, you know, being fluent in, in, in Spanish and being also fluent, not fluent, you, I don't think you can ever be, um, in, the, in the Mexican culture. So that's, that has really helped me to help my clients, both buyers and sellers, to interpret whether there's a Mexican buyer and an American seller, for example, the, their expectations, uh, their way of doing business are completely different. That is my role of being in the middle and basically being a, a translator, not of words, but of intentions, of fears. I want to ask you a few questions, delve into a little bit deeper of some of the thought patterns that you have and maybe some of the conversations that you may even have with a client. So the people watching this, because people that watch my YouTube normally just get me and they get my point of view. And what I wanna do with this podcast on The Rich Varney Show is bring in other people's point of views. They, they get other people with experience and sharing their experiences and helping them maybe make a better decision of coming to Mexico, maybe not coming to Mexico or buying real estate or the more I, I look at it. The more information someone has, the better informed someone is to make a decision. You do not want a buyer who is unsure of what they're doing. Uh, it, 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 uh, it serves both your client and yourself much better if they know what you are getting into. And I completely agree uh, with what you are doing. Information is power. And... Um, I, uh, I would rather, um, you know, I always with my buyers, before they buy, I have the talk with them. Mm -hmm. I will tell them, you need to be aware that life in Mexico is very, very different from what you're used to. It's not just the language, it's not just the customs. Um, that's a great part of it. It's, it's small things that you need to be prepared for. You know, I, I want you to, to tell me, I want you to think about it and tell me that this is really what you want to do because it can be very frustrating. I will help you. You know, I, I want you to be as well equipped um, as possible to make a happy life here. I tell you what, I think that's so important what you just said there because I think some people miss that step. And, and I've seen clients that have been here, I'm not mentioning any names, but I've seen people that have come to Mexico and only stayed a, a year, a year and a half, and just go, it's enough, it's enough, and I can't do it anymore. And having experienced it yourselves, and I'm, I'm yourself, and I, I personally felt the first couple of years here in Mexico were very, very difficult for me, very difficult. It was beautiful, sunny, but I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I didn't speak Spanish. I, I couldn't get a rhythm in my work. I, I didn't really find anything that, I, I was doing things that I enjoyed, but, but it was, something was missing for me. Did you go for a similar thing yourself? Was it, was it very, very hard the first few years you, you were here in Mexico? Um, it was, it had its challenges. Of course, I was much younger then. When I, when I came to, to Mexico, I spoke two words of Spanish. One is dias and gracias. So, um, so that was an adjustment. Now, our clients, which are for the most part different from us. They're, they're older, they have their money, they don't have to work. They just need to uh, f find a way to fit into the... Uh, wonderful, rela relaxed Mexican lifestyle. So um, it's, uh, we, I think our, those situations are, are a little bit different. The challenge here for people um, is to not go out every night, is to not drink every night, uh, is to 
have a long enough day to fit in the golfing and the yoga and the tennis and the meeting the friends for lunch and the playing cards and going to the concerts and the benefits. And so it's, it's, it's a different, uh, the, the, the people that you and I mostly deal with, those are their challenges, challenges to fill their uh, day in a way that is healthy and uh, and enriching. The, the the challenges for somebody who has really thought about it and who has listened to the talk are are manageable. They they, they really are and outweighed by by the incredible freedom that people have here. Um, the new friends that they make, the new activities that they take up, the lifestyle that they can um, afford here, that they couldn't possibly afford uh, anywhere in, in, not in Europe, not in, in, in the US, not in Canada. Certainly not with this kind of weather and ease of living. I feel uh, a huge responsibility towards my clients. I feel personally responsible for their happiness. I know it's crazy, but um, I will tell, I, and I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I will tell my clients and say, this house is not for you. Yeah. It's for this, this, and that reason. Have you thought about, uh, you know, your, your lifestyle. I do, and I'm sure you do the same thing. I do in-depth interviews yeah, with, yeah. My, with my clients, both buyers and sellers, because I really need, uh, feel that it's important in order to serve them well, to know about them, about their motivations, uh, you know, what, what moves them. So let me, let me ask, how are you finding dealing with this lockdown in Ahihik, what have you seen so far? What, how, how do you think it's affected your business? Okay, I have seen two sales fall through, two, two big ones that were postponed in the last minute until further notice. I have uh, lost one listing, a beautiful house, that uh, in, in another one in, in, in La Floresta, uh, because I, I, I talked with the owners and they said, how, how do you see this? And I think in the next couple of months, um, I don't think anything is going to happen. People are paralyzed. The whole world is paralyzed. And um, so they uh, were able to rent their house until the end of the year, and then they will relist it with me. Um, as far as listings are concerned, um, my argument to people who want to sell or thinking of selling their homes is don't hold off. Do put it on the MLS. Do allow me to market it because while people are locked away in their homes in the US, in Canada, in, in, in Europe, they're still on the internet and their, de their dreams aren't dead. They're still dreaming about coming to Mexico. So they will go on the MLS and look in your house, uh, look at your house, and they're not going to make an appointment now to see it but it'll stick with them. Mm. That, that is my, my, my way of, um, of looking at it. How has it, how has it um, affected you personally, this whole lockdown? Uh, no, number one, I couldn't imagine a nicer place to be locked down. <laughs> I mean, um, so Ahihik is a, is a fairly small community. The, uh, the Malecon, the beachfront, and the hiking trails have been blocked. Okay. The reason being that uh, the local government just does not want people to congregate, and they do not want people from mostly Guadalajara 
to come here and say, well, we'll spend our lockdown here doing all of our favorite things. They're trying to dissuade people from coming here to enjoy the lockdown that I'm enjoying. Um, my work um, has basically disappeared as far as showing houses, as far as uh, people calling me up wanting to see houses. Um, I am working with several new listings um, and it's sort of wonderful to really take our times, both the seller and me, say let's really, really closely look at this house and see, let's take our time to to see how we can make it shine even more. Let's really take our time for the listing contract, for the photos. Um, you know, I've been, you, you know, I've had a crazy, crazy year. And um, so it's personally, it has, um, it has been rather a joy. Everyone has a different experience, I guess. Everyone has it, you know. You enjoy, I mean, I, I, when we had a chat the other day, you were like, I can't believe I'm having all this time off. And I'm, I'm loving the fact that I can just hang out and, and do nothing. <laughs> yes, and I have time to cook now and I have time to see my friends. So, um, I mean, we see each other. I, I will invite one friend over and we'll sit two meters apart. But, you know, we have the big terraces. We have the beautiful weather and uh and that's why i'm saying the lockdown is rather a joy here i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put this out there so how, how do you think that the this whole covid19 thing will change it's a tricky question will change our business do you think it would change the real estate business i mean of course it's changing everything as we're talking at the moment less people out there seeing houses buying houses the no trees are not, are not working to close houses People can't buy houses being a foreigner because the foreign office is closed. And they need permission. There's so many things going on that do not allow people to buy. And people don't want, if you're selling a house, you don't want someone coming around your house and look coming in your house you don't know. So there's all these different things. that. Are good. But I want to think, how do you think in the future, in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, next couple of years, how do you think that the COVID-19 virus will affect the business? In the next couple of weeks and months, as far as expat buyers are concerned, I think there will be very, very little movement because there are no flights. People cannot physically come here. Um, we do have uh, Mexican buyers who are looking for peso priced houses um, and they are looking for absolute bargains like what like 25 percent under that that kind of bargain or 30 percent under 50 percent under the, the the more the merrier however we are working in a market where generally speaking the sellers don't have to sell because they bought their house for cash. I'm sure you've talked to your listeners about uh, the almost complete absence of mortgages here. So uh, the, the sellers don't need to sell because they don't have mortgages, because they don't have to go move across the country for another job or anything like that. So there's not a lot of pressure on them. And the buyers, because the uh, biggest part of our market are retirees from up north they don't have to buy they can take a year and a half until they find exactly what, what they want so um so i think that segment is just going to take a rest for the next couple of weeks and months but if anybody doesn't know guys the um, the numbers <clears throat> with the amount of Americans that buy real estate down in Lake Chapala um, is, is around 60% per year. We, we're looking at about 20% um, Twenty comes from uh, Canada and we're looking for uh, about 15% comes from about the Mexican market 
directly from the Mexican nationals. And then we have a 5%, three, between 5 and 3% that come from Europeans. That's the data that we, that we have that we can work with, right, from, from our own MLS. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's correct. Now, longer term speaking, once this sorts itself out, and it will sort itself out, I mean, planes will fly again, people will want to uh, take their retirement, they want to live in a, in a country, in a place like, like Lake Chapala, because the fundamentals of the Lake Chapala area have not and will not change. The fundamentals of life in Lake Chapala is the cost of living, is the climate, is the culture, and is the closeness to an international airport or the border with the US. So none of these things will change. It will take some time, and I have no idea how long, whether it's just a couple of months or you know, almost a year. I, I, I would venture to guess that by the end of the year, uh, we will have uh, clients again. Looking at other countries, how they are being affected by the coronavirus, you know, and, and, and some economies are saying it may take even years to get to the, the economy back to where it was at the beginning of the year. And as you have countries in Europe slowly uh, loosening the, the lockdown requirements, um, I think globally um, that hope that things will come back to some sort of normal is also reflected and will be reflected in the in the stock markets. Mm. And so the, again, our clients usually have investments um, and they usually have a home that they have sold or are planning to sell. So they're not, um, uh, and they're retired. So they, the, you know, the huge unemployment rate, um, it's not going to, of course, it's, it's affecting everybody, economically, mentally, emotionally. Um, but, but our segment of home buyers is, in my mind, not as affected by that. So they, they will be back as, as far as I can tell. I think more and more we're going to see when this whole thing, COVID-19 thing, dies down and we, we hopefully, well, when we get back to normality, whatever you want to call normality, but um, I think we're going to see a whole new influx of people. I, I think being a, a seller or a builder of homes or being a baker, it's people have to live and people have to eat. I agree. I agree. And they can live and eat very, very well here and we can help them uh, realize that let me ask you this question Bettina do if this coronavirus continues and we be, we stay on lockdown for a couple this hypothetically speaking we stay on lockdown for a couple of uh more months do you think we'll see a reduction in listing prices I think we should in, in my opinion, I mean, we have just gone through a very hot market. And, um, and I think we, we should see a reduction in listing prices, and uh, which makes it a great buying opportunity. So you think over the past, actually, believe it, probably since I've been working over the past two years, it's definitely been a seller's market, right? It, it has been a seller's market all the way, yes. Uh -huh. How long do you think it's been a seller's market for? Um, for about two and a half years, yes. I mean, uh, 2018 was the best year ever, 2019 
leveled off a little bit and and 2020 um has had a uh, a slowish just looking at the numbers ha has had a, a slower start but showed um a lot of um upside potential um i mean i 2020 has been the best year for me ever it's you know it's been an incredible year for me um but generally speaking um and it was just picking up to a really nice uh, pace and uh, I've had another house that people put in an offer the seller uh, it was 10,000 below asking price the seller said no I want the full price and then the buyers rethought and said you know what we'll better wait until the end of this coronavirus thing so hopefully the guy you know the, you lovely people that have been listening to this and watching this that you appreciate Bettina's honesty and straightforwardness and, um, and you've taken something away from this that you've gone, oh, great, I didn't think about that. So um, I, I thank you for, for that, Bettina. You, you, it's, really, it's really great. Finally, what, what advice would you give someone? In, I, I have to talk about in this current climate. What advice would you give to someone that is just about to come from the US, just about, you know, and, and they're, uh, you know, they're thinking, oh, maybe as soon as the bans are lifted on the flights, I can come and fly what advice would you give them prior to them coming? What could they do? Knowing Spanish uh, uh, at least a little bit, working on it, it, is, um, it will make you be able to experience Mexico in a different way. I highly recommend it. So beneficial, guys. And, and you know what? It's, it's, it's worth the pain to sit down and learn and, you know, um, I always say, if you're coming to Mexico, come and, come and get yourself a Mexican girlfriend uh, or a boyfriend, you know, and, and they can help you learn Spanish. That's worked for me, so what can I tell you? <laughs> it's all good. Nowadays, actually, believe it or not, guys, my son, uh, he's four, he teaches me Spanish now because he's, he's, he's already taken over daddy. So Bettina, thank you so much for, for coming on the show today. This has been an awesome conversation. Fabulous. Well, Rich, I want to thank you for having me on your show and to thank you for your very thoughtful questions. They made, uh, they made me focus on, on, on some important issues. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. My pleasure. My pleasure, Bettina. And I'm sure in the future, I would love to get you back on the show. Maybe when this whole coronavirus thing has calmed down and business is back to normal, as normal as we can get it, guys. So I'd love to get Bettina back and let's see if Bettina's predictions were right. Bettina, thank you so much. You take good care of yourself in this time.